devotion. Yes, my name is Bawachi Namelo. Welcome to the beautiful week that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. I know it's it's a day that the Lord has made, but I'm also decreeing that this week is the week that the Lord has made. Hmm? God bless you. Um, today's weekly devotion, it's a sharp one, and we're going to be talking about seven deadly sins that um, the Lord does not like. According to the book of Proverbs. Yes. And... Um, I'm hoping we'll take it one after the other. Yes. And we'll just take it, you know, steps by steps, by the grace of God, maybe it might last for seven weeks. But let's see how it goes. We've been directed by the Spirit of God. Now let us pray. My Father, my God, I want to say thank you for the hours come. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to do this. Thank you for giving the idea also to do this. Father, we thank you because we know you surely will speak to us. Father, I ask that in your infinite mercy that I might disappear for you to appear. I pray in your infinite mercy that you speak to your children in the words in which you want them to hear, not what I want them to hear. May you take charge, take glory, take honor, and change that evil heart that has refused to repent. Change it through this ministration that the end, the name of the Lord shall be glorified, that you give them a new heart because you said you take away the old heart. But I give us everyone listening and watching a new heart. At the end, your name shall be glorified. In Jesus' wonderful name, it is done. Amen. God bless you. Now, today's um, weekly devotion is seven dead lessons. All sins are equal. Let us not get that wrong. All sins are equal. There's no sin that is greater than the other. Yes, because if you keep one and break the other, you've still you've st- you've still sinned. Do you get me? But there's seven things that the Lord does not like. And as believers, we should be aware and keep it and try and ask them to help us see us through. Some have it, but they don't know they have it. Some practice it, but they feel, oh, okay, just one of those things. You understand? It's a weakness. But I'll tell you, there's no weakness God cannot solve. There's no problem he cannot solve. There's no weakness he cannot change. But just depend and cast your hopes on him and he'll solve it for you. God bless you. So we're going to the book of Proverbs 6. 6 um, verse 17. Yes, there are three things there, but I'm going to take one for for this week. It says, a proud look, a lying tongue, and a hands that shed innocent blood. But I want to take a proud look today, because there are three different sins. Um, a proud look, someone that's proud, a lying tongue, and also the hands that shed innocent blood. Praise the Lord. Um, now, if you watch the proud look, a proud look does not mean you, you have a, a face like no, a proud look means somebody that is proud, somebody that, that has so much pride, somebody that is full of, full of he or herself, someone that is selfish, because somebody that is proud is selfish, somebody that is proud is greedy. I look at them, I'm just classifying them in those terms. I want you to understand that is my own definition. It's not any other kind of, um, uh, it's not actually um, a simple definition, but just I'm just trying to be straight to the point. To me, somebody that is proud, God does not like them. It is written that he, he will disgrace the proud and he will lift and bless the humble. It is in the scriptures. Yes. But he does not like the proud. No matter. The proud are always boastful. They boast a lot. Because they depend they can do it by their own power. But when you humble yourself and believe that everything that happens, it is God. You understand? Because God blesses man. God lifts man down and brings man down as well. Yes, he can. But if you're humble, he will lift you up. If you're proud, he will bring you down. Remember um, the king of um, Babylon, um, sorry, my pronunciations, I just get a bit tense with that word. That king had so much pride, but God humbled him at the end of the day. God made him what? Go into the forest, into the wilderness for seven years. He ate grass like a cow. Yes, he did. And by the time God restated him, he now believed there was a God. Because he believed that he built an empire by his own power, by himself, not by the will of God. And God had to disgrace him to make him eat grass like a cow. That is what I'm trying to make you understand that your business is flourishing, you have a beautiful family, 
your life is going on well and you have pride. You believe nobody can talk to you. You believe nobody can advise you. You believe that you are overall, that you're perfect. Brother, sister, it is not you. It is God. It is God that blessed you to have a beautiful business or a, a wonderful career in, in the workspace. It's God that made you be in that position in which you are. Don't be full of yourself. When, um, when people older than you that are talking to you, you look down on them and feel, oh, okay, fine. I am better than you. Listen, brother, you're not better than anybody. It's just God. It's just God that has blessed you and kept you in that position. Be grateful. Always be grateful. Jesus loves you and that's why he gave you that position. I know some of us will say, I don't have pride, I don't have pride. Listen, when two or three people uh, have said it to your face, you have pride. Brother, sister, sit down. Ask yourself a question. Do I have pride? I think I do. Because the same three different people from three different scenes or probably not even related to you or something told you this thing. It is not that they envy you. They are saying the truth. But you know, we believers don't like it. We people, humans, don't like it when people criticize us. I'll tell you the truth. At times, I like it when people criticize me. It makes me find my weakness and try to arrange them properly. Like as I'm doing this video, if you criticize it, I will not pick offense. I'll try and find where the mistakes are and I'll learn from it. Yes. And that is one thing ministers should understand. Every minister that has pride is not actually doing what the Father wants him to do. He's derailing from what God wants him to do. So please, if you're listening or watching, yes, on any platform, because we have YouTube and also the podcast, ask the Lord to help you change you from this weakness because he can the lord can he has always been in the business of doing it the lord loves it when we call upon him we depend we cast our cares on him to help us he loves it because he's the god that gives and never receives he loves giving he loves helping he loves solving problems the only thing we can do is to give him praise huh? so my advice to you is please ask for his assistance to heal you huh? But we're going to pray. I'm going to ask the Lord to take away that demon, that spirit of pride that is in us. Sit down, ask yourself that question. Do I have pride? And if people have told you, try and pray about it. Because some people don't know they have it. That's what I'm trying to explain. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this video to almost 10 minutes, but some people don't know they have pride. And that is one thing you should work on. But I decree upon your life this week, let us pray. Father, my King and my God, I thank you for today, for the hour has come. May this week be a beautiful week for your children that is listening and watching. May they be blessed this week. Wherever they go, may they be blessed. That person that is going for a job interview this week, receive that job in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it. Let the favor of God go before you. Let the grace and anointing of ease follow you that you will not labor excessively to get that, to pass that interview. You will get it because the Lord has granted it unto you in the name of Jesus. This week shall be a beautiful week. You're going out, you shall be blessed. You're coming back, you shall be blessed. This day, the Lord shall go before you to make every crooked way straight before you in the mighty name of Jesus. He will make that path that has been rough smooth before you. You that is going for a business transaction, I decree favor, go before you in the mighty name of Jesus. You that is going for a job interview, I've said that before, receive that job in the mighty name of Yeshua. You that is believing God for a child, receive your baby this week. You shall conceive. I speak to that womb to receive life. That fallopian tool that have been blocked, receive life now in the mighty name of Jesus. Be open in the mighty name of Jesus. Be open in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody here, you're having fibroid. Mm, mm, and you're planning to go for an operation. That operation will be successful in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to you, to that fibroid shrink now in the mighty name of Jesus. And that operation will be successful. You will not die that operation. You come out alive. And you give God the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare. You're going out, you shall be blessed. No weapon fashion against you this week shall prosper. Every any date in this week they have they've they've projected evil upon you today. I ask the blood of Jesus, for it's written that the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than the blood of Abel to wipe away and cancel their evil agenda. 
You will not experience fire disaster. You will not experience accident in any form in the mighty name of Jesus. Every arrow that flies by the day or by the uh, by the day or by the night will not come close to you. Surely they shall gather. But if it's not of the Lord, they shall scatter. Any gathering that is not of the, of the Lord before you shall scatter in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that this week you shall testify to God's goodness and God's glory. In Jesus' wonderful name, I pray. I'm praying for that person that dreams and do not remember. Today, receive your healing, total healing in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask the Holy Spirit, who is the head, the Father, the Maker, to go forth and cancel that wig, remove that evil demonic wig that the enemy has placed over your head to make you not to remember your dreams. That veil in which they have placed, that you you be blind spiritually. Let the Holy Ghost take it away. Cancel it. Let the blood of Jesus that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel wipe and destroy it. And for you to begin to receive your dreams and your messages back again in the mighty name of Jesus. I anoint everybody listening and watching. I anoint you with the blood of Jesus that this week he will protect you, guide you, and deliver you. For in Jesus' wonderful name, it is done. Amen. God bless you. For that person that has um, that dream that does not remember, the Lord said there is a veil upon your face. All you need to do is just ask the veil. Just pull it off. But it has been pulled off, though. It has been pulled off because the Lord has ministered that to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, please, I would love you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Yes, if you like these videos, subscribe, like, click the like button. If you don't, dis, if you dislike it, please also click the dislike button. And um, because I know you like it, so surely like it. And um, please subscribe as well. Comment. Feel free to comment. Share, share this video as well. If you're blessed with this video, please share. If you want to join us, you can also find us on Facebook. Yes, Three Minutes with Jesus, or Come on to me, all ye that are heavy laden. But just go to Three Minutes with Jesus on Facebook, our Facebook page, and like it as well. On Instagram, well, don't worry about the Instagram. If you're watching me on Instagram, just follow me back for more exciting and interactive um, gospel from the Lord Jesus. And also on podcast platforms, please don't forget to subscribe, share that podcast as well, so that you can also bless others. God bless you till I see you next week. Shalom and be rapturable.